Uh, since the Virginia uh, baseball field shooting, Congress has been in this debate about how exactly to address what they're seeing as this new threat to their members. You know, what sort of security should we have? And we're going to give you uh, that update here. Uh, by the way, uh, Scalise has apparently been moved out of the critical care uh, portion of the hospital that he's in, so it looks like his condition continues to improve, which obviously is is very good news. That's great. Yeah. And that was very very scary in the early days, I'm sure, for for him and his family and friends. Um, but let's go back to security. So apparently, uh, a, a number of members of Congress met with Paul Ryan, and there was this discussion about freeing up a certain amount of the campaign funds, basically the money they have allotted to them. I don't think it's specifically campaign, but it's this money that they have, their congressional allowances, uh, to possibly allow them to use up to twenty-five thousand dollars of that for additional security. So at present, it doesn't look like it's new funding that they'll have, but allowing them to use their funding in a different way. As well, lawmakers exiting the meeting said that the funds would likely help lawmakers hire personal protection, especially in districts where local police aren't able to provide around the clock security, which is probably true for a lot of members of Congress. The funds could also be used to help members pay for alarms in their homes or panic buttons if they're ever in physical danger, no word yet on panic rooms. Um, now, in terms of what has actually been done, there was a $29 million bump for the Capitol Police, which uh, obviously would directly impact the sort of attack that we saw. Um, additionally, members have discussed obtaining uh, blanket waivers from the FEC, permitting members to use campaign funds for security while conducting political business. Uh, currently, they can uh, obtain individual waivers, but they want to free that up, make it a little bit easier in the future. I don't mean to be skeptical, but that last thing is a big deal. When I think you're allowed that total discretion over monies that were designated for your campaign, and you can apply them to security, I just feel it's it's just fraught with problems in terms of that money being responsibly spent. We have enough problems with money being responsibly spent anyway in Washington, government money and money from representatives, but I think that really leaves the door open. Having said that, Obviously, you'd like to see some protection for these people away from the hill. Right now, they only have protection you know, when they're there mm -hmm. near the place of governance, if you will. Unless yeah. they're in leadership, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Right, which is what was the case with that uh, baseball field. But you know, when they're doing community theater or whatever they're doing, I mean, <laughs> you know, there's nobody <laughs> watching the doors. So uh, it does seem as though something would be appropriate. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course, right, when you start giving blanket allowances to allow members of Congress, politicians to spend their money freely, and they could just say line item security, you know, that said, that seems to be the, you know, like this is where we're gonna draw the line on, That's true. on, on campaign finance. <laughs> like, so it seems like they need more security, and this seems like a pointless thing to argue against, mm -hmm. have at it. You know, well, yeah. what I would be interested to find out anyway. is if you were to run a poll nationwide, uh, do, do do members of Congress have bodyguards? I think a, a lot of Americans, maybe the majority, would say, yeah, they have bodyguards yeah. at all times. They're it's just a, it's a terrible, terrible time. Everything you know yeah. is a terrible time. They they probably do need this. Yeah, yeah at I, this time in yeah, history, it, it's, I do. both won't argue. I don't I don't argue the specifics here, except I, I share your concern about the blanket waivers. If they want to use their money to get security. They'll probably find out some way to be corrupt with that. It doesn't. It's not immediately apparent to me how that is. I would just say, if they need security, they should get security. But they don't need security because this attack just happened. I mean, there's there's no evidence that this attack is connected to anything broader, is indicative of That's any true. sort of new trend. You're right. It is an event. But while you know, Gabby Giffords was shot, and I, I believe since the beginning, there have been a couple of dozen congressmen who have been shot over the, the couple hundred year history of our nation, which is terrible in each one of those instances, but not necessarily proof that all right, of right. them need security at all times. If they want to get it, I'm not saying they it's should. It's just there's, a, there's an ugliness to the times That's true. that we live in. And obviously, it doesn't seem to be, to be a big stretch that, that, that politicians are or perhaps, but you're right. Everything you say is true. Or yeah. perhaps are more in danger. I don't think GOP lawmakers are in more danger than, than I would Democratic the lawmakers. Opposite. All right, I would argue the opposite. But in, but it's that that's a silly argument to make. Let's have it Let's for 45 more minutes. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> so uh, it's not the first silly argument we can have on yeah, this show. That's true. Won't be the last. Yeah. We're not the Young Turks. You're the Young Turks. You power this show. Together, we built something amazing. We've broken stories like the Donna Brazil story, the mainstream media wouldn't break. We built the studio, we built this network, it's now number one, all thanks to you guys. 
let's come build it even bigger and stronger. tytnetwork.com slash join.